pretty sure they're not carpenter. Yeah. Uh, actually, what the problem is, the radar is broken the hammer. <laughs> ah. Yeah, we didn't install GPS on that one. Okay, so here's what we're doing. We have a 2x10 um, on the bottom, and I got, I got both of these at 10 foot lengths. I know that's too long for the top one, but that's okay, I'll explain what we did. The bus is about 8 feet from the outside, it's about 7.5 on the inside. We cut off, because of this 10 footer, we cut off basically a foot and put it up on top. This, this gives us basically an inch and a half, because 2x4s aren't, or 2x8 twos. They're like inch and a half. This gives us another inch and a half here. Then over here, we put another piece of a two by eight. We gave us another inch and a half. So this basically gave us three inches extra of lift. Um, I didn't want to do any more than this because the more of this you do, the more you're teeter-tottering. Okay, you're, you're taking control away from the device that's doing the lifting. <clears throat> so now if you watch, Grandpa, you grab that side. Set it into place. Hold on. Here we go. Slides in. Okay, got it. And if you if you look, there's a lip. We have this this rain guard here. So this piece will be on the rain guard. If it bends it, so be it. This piece will be on this support here. Between the two of them, they'll help keep it lock, locked into place. Okay. Over here, it's the same thing. But you got to center them on the jack. Okay, you could use two 10 by 10 or two two by tens if you wanted to. Um, I, the eight, two by eight was just cheaper. Um, and then we'll start jacking. Okay, so that's the setup process, and we'll talk more about some other stuff a little bit later. I welded. I made magical welding spots. Yes, she's been practicing her Harry's. What are you like a year two yeah. in the Harry Potter world? I'm a junior. Yes, she did welding. Did you zoom in on it, Mom? Now, none of us are professional welders. Duh. And I'm telling you, my girl did as good as any of us could have done. She done good. I'm happy with it. This is a jig we're going to use. Turn it this way. Okay. We're going to use this as the spacer because we could not find a piece of, of quarter, quarter round steel or tubular steel that would fit inside the ribs just right. So we added a space. This is the distance that we're raising the bus, basically, um, roughly. So what we're going to do is, hold it like this, so I can point. If this is the top, like this, hold that. Thank you. I tried to do that. Oh, is that what you're doing? I'm sorry. Yes. I'm sorry, sweetie. We're going to set it in place. Three inches down, we're going to drill a hole through here. And then down about eight inches, we'll drill another hole. And then from the bottom, we're at certain two, two spots. And we're going to pre-drill just to pre-trap so that they're already there. So that when we're raising it, all we have to do is go in and... Uh, just run the bolts in real quick. Maybe do some quick tapping. Just to get it through. But this is going to give us the spacers for the, the first six that are going in. Basically. Good job. As you can see, we cut across on the forward part of that frame. All the way across. Here's the jack up. We got four nerds simultaneously jacking it up all at the same time. Uh, we got one of us, because there's four of us, one of each of our farm jacks. We got to a certain point though, the three of the types of farm jacks, because we had three of one type and we, I couldn't find a fourth, so we ended up with another one. Had like a black, um, kind of a mounting or securing tab. We got it up there, and then at some point in this, you'll see that, or you may get a chance to see, we had to stop and then realign it. So if you have the type that has that that black part that's adjustable on top, make sure that you go ahead and just turn it straight up. Um, we almost didn't catch it because we were so focused on looking down. But as you can see, we raise a few links uh, and then we pause and all four of us had a measuring tape. And then we would tell each other what our measuring was and then if we had to adjust one, because they were, then we did that. So we had four different measuring tapes, one at each station. 
So we did this. We took our time and did it right. You want to make sure everybody's safe. Get up to the height we want. Now, if you look at where, where Miss Dawn is, that's, that's the lovely lady right in front of you. At the top of that jack, you'll see a black thing. That was that tab that was aimed inward that I was talking about earlier. But what's happening now is I'm taking around um, some of those pieces and we're installing the supports. We're installing a piece of uh, one inch square tubing. And then we had spacers cut um, out of, I think it was a 14 gauge uh, sheet metal. We just had them rip it, uh, uh, 10 foot length of sheet metal, just rip it a whole bunch of times. So we just had a whole bunch of those strips. But I think they were about an inch and a half uh, wide. Um, so that's what's going. It's an inch and a half plus a strip of a four foot inch and a half, four foot inch square tubing, and then a 14 gauge four foot piece also. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm bolting in one at a time. And notice that the nerds are staying by their stations. Um, the reason you don't see anybody on the other far corner station away from us is because I did that one while I was there. I had everything next to me to do it immediately. And then everybody stays by their station until we get at least one brace in position. Um, the reason is we're paranoid about something going wrong. So everybody had to stay where they were supposed to be until we got that. Um, and then we would get it in place. We was Right there, you see that? That's a, that's a um, C-clamp. C-clamps are basically, the, it's, it's a mobile steel vise. Yeah, and we're going through here, and as we get each nerd station bolted down, you can see Grandpa Nerd to the left there. He's pre-C-clamping in pieces, and then between the four of us, one C-clamps them in, or a couple of them are doing that, and then we're pre-setting them. And then I'm going around, or we're taking turns going around, because remember, everybody in our nerd herd nomads, we all have to do the work. Nobody's wimping out. Um, we go around and we get all these in. Uh, this is critical that you get these in as soon as you can. Uh, don't trust these jacks to hold it up. As a point of interest, let me establish that we do not know what we're doing. We simply watched a whole bunch of videos, and we're doing this. So... You're doing this at your own risk. There was a mild breeze for us that day, and we decided that the breeze was fine. There wasn't much of a breeze, and we weighed and measured everything repeatedly, and we had safety checks upon safety checks. Double, triple check your stuff. If you have any doubt, stop, because if this thing falls, somebody could die. So please, 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 please be really careful with this, and remember, we are not professionals. We're just figuring this out as the nerd brains kind of nuke it out. One little baby step at a time. Because we babies. Yeah. Here's the test. Here we go. Now we start releasing these jacks. Uh, make sure we didn't practice this. So we had some, some difficulty. They don't really show it there. Um, unlatching these jacks. Um... And you can see also he has to pry the nails up. We actually didn't show that earlier. We also nailed the base of the jacks to the wood so they wouldn't slide around. Like I said, extra, extra safety. If you can think of something safe to do, add it to it. It's just not worth the risk. Uh, I know I'm only going to use these jacks probably one time, but extra, extra safety. You just don't want to get hurt. This is supposed to be a fun thing. And I love my nerds, and I don't want to risk hurting any of them. But see, they pop down. Yeah. There it is. We're nerdy, and we're high up there now. We're all jacked up. Hey, what's up, guys? This is the morning after. We'd have done our, our little closeout thing yesterday if we could have, but it got too dark, and it was starting to rain, and we needed to get the tarp over the roof. We started physically jacking the roof up about 4 o'clock. Um, PM, 1600 for you people that like to use GMT. It took us about 12, about, about two hours, not 12, sorry, I'm tired. About two hours. Uh, so we, we finished raising it around 6, 6 p.m. Um, yesterday. And then we uh, we tarped it. That took another 20 minutes to tarp and put tools away, wipe things down. Um, and we did our measurements today, again, to see how close we were. And we got within a quarter of an inch all the way around with all four jacks. All four corners are within a quarter of an inch of each other. Um, this, the ones that are like two forward ones, 
are within like an eighth of an inch. And then the two back ones are like within an eighth of an inch. But between the, the, the widest gap is about a quarter inch. Um, so very happy with that. I'm not going to split peas on that. I'm not building a roulette table. It doesn't have to be exact. So we came out early today and had to finish up some bracing up some ones that gave, were giving us trouble yesterday, but it was just too dark. And we were too exhausted. It wouldn't have been safe. So we worked on the, the tail end, the stern. Um, yeah. Now, now, some of the biggest things if, when you're doing your roof raise, we, if I had to do it again, I would not have used um, cutting wheels, grinders, cutting wheels, to cut them. I would have gone and used my reciprocating saw. Um, but we had two grinding wheels, so we figured, hey, it'd be faster. The problem is, um, at one point when we were cutting it, the roof, it, it cut through, so it, the, the weight just kind of went thunk, dropped down just a little bit, and it grabbed, uh, grabbed the wheel, and it jerked it out of my, my, lovely, my lovely lady's hand, and then spun it around. Luckily, she did not have it on the locked on position, um, and also, she was luckily wearing this, because her, her arm was bothering her, um, because this has some little metal pieces in it, but it did. As you can see, cut through it. There's some metal pieces in here that, that help kind of deflect it and her, her cat-like reflexes. Um, highly, highly, highly recommend using reciprocating saws to cut your roof because when it when it when it when it dropped down, she was cutting one of the last ones and it, it kind of dropped down and grabbed that that blade. It just jerked it and it threw it and it spun around and hit her. Um, scared the bejeebas out of me. Um, yeah, I, uh, the, the world's going to be unhappy when she passes because I'm going to be a mean, grumpy old bastard real quick because uh, she's my happy guy. Say, that's it. You think of a wonderful thought. Any happy little thoughts? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so we got the roof raised. We took it up. Um, can you see the ladder in the back? Yeah. That's a nine-foot ladder, people, and it is not touching the ceiling. We raised it. 20 inches, 20 and about a half, and we have a nine foot ceiling in this thing. That's a nine foot ladder. Boom! Ha ha! Shaka laka. Shaka laka laka. Boom! I don't know how that goes. <laughs> so, uh, I'm, like, I'm, I'm like the geek parent, all the kids are like, oh god, dad, could you drop me off a mile from school? I'll walk. Yeah, it's only right. exercise they get. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, uh, we also brought in these this morning, two cabinets, um, because. I'm tired of not being able to find tools. Um, so my wife had a really cool idea. I had these at home. Just bring them in here and attach them to the bus here. Um, and they're lockable. And the bus is, well, the bus ain't lockable now because it ain't got no windows. Uh, but that's where we're at. So now we start fine tuning. We gotta go get our windows next week. Bring the windows in. Once we decide where the windows are going, then we can, some, some of these are gonna come back out. And then some of these are gonna stay in. Some of the braces we put in. Um, and then once we decide which ones stay in, those ones will weld We'll add an extra bolt, so there'll be two bolts on the bottom minimum and two bolts on the top minimum, um, and we're going to tack weld um, all of it into place once we have the windows. Because if, the, if this is in place of window, I'm going to take it out because I can use that steel somewhere else, doing the understores, things like that. Uh, other than that, other than the one minor injury that hurt like hell, scared the bejeebas out of all of us, nobody really got hurt. There was no ER visits, uh, no stitches required. Okay. I think it scared us more than anything else. Um, so, Just dump some peroxide on it, yeah. stick a Band-Aid on it. <laughs> yeah, we keep peroxide. Yeah. A bottle, big old bottle of peroxide and Band-Aids here. Just, just dump it on there, drench it. We Green also have yeah. ibuprofen and yeah. biofreeze. Too. Yeah, yeah, ibuprofen, ibuprofen and biofreeze and what? A lot of blue ribbon. Do <laughs> we do not? <laughs> okay, so a lot of people, we've heard some people saying that they couldn't get the back end to disconnect. Folks, this is just steel. We kept cutting until we got it to disconnect because we know we can put it back together with adding steel, steel, welding, steel. So we cut and cut and cut and grind it until we got it separated because we wanted it up. It's just metal. If in doubt, cut more. Okay? Don't worry about it. I mean, we even pried this part open to get in here. I know that if I have to cut that off, which I'm going to, I can resheet around it. Um, I can round it up. So I'm going to try to put it back down as flat as I can, but chances are I just have to cut it off and run my sheet metal another two or three inches. Make it the way you want it, 
do it right the first time so you really enjoy it. Don't go, I wish I had done that later. I mean, we see a lot of schoolies doing that. Um, it's like they get apprehensive or they get in a hurry. Don't. Get it done. You want to gotta cut more? We went through, we're going to go through like 10 blades, 10, at least 10 blades cutting through here between them grinding and popping and breaking. We just kept throwing more blades in it. I'd rather spend 20 bucks in blades and have what I want than not and regret it for 20 years. So, peace out. Uh, we'll try to get some still shots when we got more lighting here later on. And, or if you have questions, send it to the Nerd Herd Nomads at what? Gmail. At Gmail. Or Facebook. Or Twitter. Or, we, or, don't twit. we don't twit. We don't We don't tweet. Um, I, I don't know what the hell, we hell that is. We Instagram. Oh, we... Do something. What? Instagram. We Instagram. Whatever the heck Instagram is, we do that evidently. Um, so, peace out, my nomies.